To first make the agarose gel, we add powdered agarose to 1x TPE buffer. We'll then mix the solution as best we can and heat it to boiling in a microwave. We will monitor the mixture closely as it sits in the microwave to ensure that it doesn't burn. Once the mixture begins to boil, we'll remove it repeatedly from the microwave and agitate it gently to ensure that all of the agar roast has been mixed with the TBE buffer. Once the agarose has been mixed into the TBE buffer, we're ready to pour our gel. We start by assembling our gel apparatus with a comb, a casing, and two barricades. We then pour the hot agarose into the gel casing and allow it to sit at room temperature until it solidifies. Once the agarose solidifies, we cover the gel with TBE buffer and then remove the comb. Removing the comb reveals wells, which are cavities in the agarose, into which we can place our DNA samples. We'll use a micropipetter and plastic pipette tips that are sterile and free of DNases to aliquot a small quantity of each of our samples into their respective wells. The samples have been mixed with a blue dye, which will help us monitor how far they've moved in the gel when we place an electrical current through it. The same procedure is used to place each sample into its respective well until all samples have been placed in the gel. At this point in time, we're now ready to connect our gel to a power source to place an electrical current through it that will move the DNA through the gel. We set the voltage to 100 volts and press the running man to make it run. When we do this, we actually see bubbles arise from one of the leads letting us know that there is electricity passing through the TBE buffer and therefore through the gel. As time proceeds, we'll notice that the dye actually moves through the gel, giving us a very distinct front that we can follow. Notice there are two fronts here, an aqua colored one and a blue one. At this point in time, we're now prepared to analyze our gel. There are two methods that help us analyze gels. The first utilizes what's known as an intercalating agent, which binds to DNA and fluoresces under ultraviolet light. This intercalating agent was added to the agarose TBE mixture before we poured the gel. The gel shown here contains an intercalating reagent and is exposed to ultraviolet light. And as can be seen, the bands representing fragments of DNA fluoresce a bright green. The second method that we can use to help us analyze a gel is one where we add a stain or dye to the gel, which thereby stains or dyes the DNA allowing us to visualize the bands. We start by placing our gel into a container and pouring the dye on it. We let it incubate with the dye for one minute before pouring the dye back into its container. After removing the dye, we now must de-stain the gel by first adding water and then placing the gel into the 40 degree incubator for set periods of time. Once the water in the gel container becomes too blue, we'll pour it off, add more water, and repeat until the gel efficiently destains. Once the gel has fully destained, we can then begin to visualize the bands of DNA, similar to the way we were able to visualize them with the intercalating agent.